Have you seen this Octoprint plugin called Octolapse? For a while now, people in the community have been telling me about this plugin for Octoprint called Octolapse. And if you watch this channel, you probably realize that I don't adopt things as fast as some other people do. But then Glenn over at Fun King 3D released this video, which was a really cool looking time lapse. And then Walter over at Country 3D, he released this video. Again, another really awesome time lapse. So I thought it was time for me to check this whole Octolapse thing out. What Octolapse is, is a plugin for Octoprint developed by a guy named Brad. And Brad, I'm not even going to try to pronounce your last name because I'm going to mess it up. But what the plugin does is it moves the hot end and the bed to a certain location before it takes the snapshot. So the model appears like it's coming out of thin air. You can't ever see the printer move. When I went to set up Octolapse on a couple of different machines, I found out there's some very specific settings that you need to change in order to get things to come out correctly. So today we're going to walk through that process, get Octolapse set up, and check out some really cool time lapses. So let's head over to the computer and get started. Here's the Octolapse plugin site. You really don't need to go here unless you need some more information. All the links will be in the description below. So let's head into an instance of Octoprint. So the first thing we need to do is get the plugin installed. So let's go to settings, go to plugin manager, click get more, search for Octolapse, and click install. When the plugin install is complete, it's going to ask you to restart the services for Octoprint. You can close this, hit restart now, we'll reload, and now you'll notice on the main page you have this new option for Octolapse. So we'll click up here. There are a few default printers to choose from installed in Octolapse, but you can just make your own custom one for any printer that you'd like to use. But you do have to know a few things about that printer. So let's take the Prusa MK2 for example. Let's click on settings. Now I found that these settings are very important because if you don't get them set up correctly, your printer does some really strange things when it's trying to print. So the easiest way to know how to get these things set up is you can head into your slicer and try to copy the settings from there or you can download the G code that you use on this printer and those settings will usually be listed at the bottom. So we can just download it, open it up with a notepad, and if you scroll all the way to the bottom, this is going to tell you all your settings. And for Octolabs, most important, retraction and Z lift settings. So either way is fine, they will achieve the same result. So back into Octolabs, back into settings, First thing we need to do is adjust for retraction length and z-hop distance. So our retraction length in that g-code file is 1 millimeter, and our z-hop distance is 0.6. And then we need to adjust our axis settings. Most importantly, the axis speed and the axis mode. Now I like to change this one over to millimeters a second. Again, we can pull our g-code up and we can copy the settings. My retraction speed is 35. In the slicer that I use, the detraction speed is set to 0 but that means that it uses the retraction speed. So you can see here it's set to zero, but that means it's also 35. So we'll set that one to 35 as well. Movement speed is for non-printing moves. You can get that from your G-code or your slicer. Here we see travel speed is 180, so we'll put 180. And again here for Z movement speed and the slicer that I use, Z movement and travel speed are gonna be the same. So this one will be 180 as well. On the axis mode section, most of the time the defaults are going to work for you. I don't suggest you change anything unless you exactly know what you're doing, but you can check those in the G-code. So if you scroll all the way to the top, for example, you can see the M83 command. We are using relative mode. So back to the settings. These can stay default. And then we go to home mesh bed leveling position. You can usually leave auto detect enabled. What that means is if it sees a G28 or a G29 come across, it won't count that as part of the time lapse. If you do have to disable this for some reason and it's not registering your G28s or G29s, if you disable it, you're going to have to know what the origin measurements are for when the time lapse to stop and start. But we're going to leave that enabled. Any other commands that might trigger the time lapse due to motion, you can add them here. Most of the time you can find those in your start G code. If you go into your slicer, you can see them in custom G code. Prusa machines use a mesh bed leveling command, G80, instead of the regular G29, so you probably want to add that to your list. So we'll just put it in here, G80. Again, it doesn't matter whether you go to your G code or your slicer, you can find the same commands. Right here is your G80. Back to settings. 
Print volume will go by the settings that you've already set in the profile in OctoPrint. If you need to override them, you can enable them here and then enter them by hand. But I found just using the default ones in the profile works just fine. If you want to abort the current snapshot, if you go out of a certain bounds, you can do that as well. Printer position tolerance, you'll probably never have to change that, leave it default. Snapshot command, it's going to be snap. And then priming height, unless you're priming at a really high distance for some reason, or you're using a nozzle that's more than 0.75 millimeters, you won't have to change this. For most of us, 0.75 is going to be just fine. So we can go ahead and save it. Here's where you can set where it's going to take the snapshot. So where is it going to put the bed and the extruder when it's ready to take the snap? I like fixed extruder at center left because that means it's going to move the hot into the left and put the bed in the center before it takes each snap. You'll have to pick which one of these works for you based on your camera orientation. But we'll pick this for now. You can also tweak specific settings, but defaults usually work just fine. When do you want to take the snapshot? I like taking it on every layer change, but you can change it to timed or in the G-code or however you'd like. What kind of video would you like to use for the time lapse? I stick with default MP4 fixed length, but there are a couple different options in here if you want to change frames per second or the fixed length amount. Default webcam, if you have more than one webcam, you should be able to select it here. And if you need to turn on debugging, you can. And these buttons at the bottom will tell you what Octolapse is doing and provide you a little more information. So when the trigger state is, the extruder state, the position when it's going to take the snapshot, or the position changes. You can just leave these turned off unless you want a little more information about what Octolapse is doing. By default, Octolapse is enabled, but if you want to disable it for a certain amount of prints, you can just click this button. There are very specific settings that you can go in for each one of these and tweak, but most of the time, default's going to work out. So that's pretty much all you need to know about setting up Octolapse. Just make sure your settings are correct for your machine. I did want to circle back about build volume size. Those values are going to be pulled from your printer profile right here. Go to print bed and volume. You probably entered these when you set up the printer, but that's the volumes that Octolapse is going to use. One other thing I found that you probably need to do is make sure that the default time lapse is set to off because things get a little confused if you have Octolapse and time lapse enabled. So now all you have to do is make sure your camera is set up in the right position and start a print. You can see Octolapse will now have a little camera icon over it, letting you know it's going to take some snapshots. If you go into Octolapse now, you do have the Stop Octolapse feature. If you want to stop just this time lapse, you can with that button. The next time you do a print, it still will be enabled. Or if you want to disable it altogether, you can use this button up here. With these switches toggled, you can go in and you can find out all the information right here on the Octolapse page. You can see the position error popped up. That's because it was printing the prime lab that Prusa uses. This doesn't hurt anything, and as you can see, Octolapse does continue. You'd have to put that in as an exception in the Octolapse settings if you want that to go away. As Octolapse does its thing, it's going to give you a preview of the most recent snapshot that it took. Now all we have to do is wait for the print to finish. And when your time lapse is complete, it will render it, and then it will notify you that the time lapse is done. You can have a small preview right here in the Octolapse window. Or you can head over to the time lapse tab, and you can download it. And watch it. Now all we need to do is check out some time lapse footage. <laughs> Again, Octolapse is a really cool plugin, and you get some really nice time lapse footage from it. I've tried it on Raspberry Pi 3B, 3B Plus, and Raspberry Pi 0W, and after I got it set up correctly, I haven't had any issues whatsoever. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching.